We are so close to the Texas Longhorns football season, four days away, close enough to count it on one hand, but I won't do that in front of you because I assume my target audience can count to four. Excited for Saturday. Let's get it, man. Hook them. You are Locked On Longhorns, your daily podcast on the Texas Longhorns. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked on Longhorns, the show. Jonathan Davis, your host. Today's episode of Locked on Longhorns is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked on. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on today to get started. And on today's episode of Locked on Longhorns, we are answering some questions about the 2023 football season, courtesy of Inside Texas. In the second segment, we are discussing the Achilles heel thus far of the Steve Sarkeesian era at Texas. And then the last segment, 12, you heard that right, 12 Texas Longhorn football players have been named to the Senior Bowl watch list. A lot of talent, a lot of experience on this football team. We're discussing all of that and more on today's episode of Locked On Longhorns, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, four days away from Texas football, four days away from hopefully what will be a special season in 2023 and earlier this week i tried to get this episode out yesterday i was dealing with some technical difficulties but you know don't worry we have a lot of great content coming out this week and a ton of great content uh coming out for football season but i was on inside texas uh reading one of the articles and they do such a good job i assume everybody you know that's listening to me right now is subscribed or follows inside texas if not please go do so they do such a good job of putting out daily content um, you know, helping bridge that gap between us and our favorite football team with all the information they put out. But I was on Inside Texas over the weekend reading an article and they did a roundtable with all of the major contributors that we see on YouTube and, you know, on Twitter and on the website. And they answered some questions about, you know, the Texas football team this season, you know, about their record and, you know, key players and things like that. And I thought it was a really, you know, cool idea. And I thought they did a really good job. So I said, I'm going to bring those questions to Locked on Longhorns and I'm going to answer them live on the show. But I definitely want to make sure I give all the credit in the world uh, to Inside Texas. And like I said, if you're not subscribed to them, please go do so by the time you finish listening to this episode. (laughs) All right. So the first question they answered is what will the Texas Longhorns record be this season in 2023? And I've kind of heard everything. Um, amongst Texas fans from nine and three to 11 and one. I've heard a few 12 and O's. I don't know if they were serious or, you know, we're just at that point where you drank enough Kool-Aid and you start to believe it. But most people are between nine and three and 11 and one. And I've heard some people say that nine and three would be a joke, right? Nine and three would be a disappointment, you know, with all of this talent and all this, all of this experience, uh, you know, the lack of a true contender in the big 12, nine and three wouldn't be good enough. And then some people said 11 and one isn't realistic, right? It's not realistic to assume that this Texas football team won't lose at least twice this year or won't fall on their face at least once. And then, you know, maybe go against a team that's just too tough to beat in Alabama. I don't know. Right. But I think the consensus is 10 and two. If I remember the article correctly for inside Texas, pretty much all of the guys uh, predicted 10 and two. And I think that's the perfect soft spot for this Texas football team. Right. I think they'll be good enough to win 10 games in the regular season. They'll take a big jump from the last two years, but they're still probably, you know, at least twice during the season where, you know, they just won't be the best team on the field that day. And that happens right when you're trying to, you know, get back to being one of the top teams in college football. You got to learn how to win. And you got to learn how to win at the highest level. So I think 10 and two, most Texas fans would be OK with that. And that's my record prediction uh, for the Texas football team in 2023. Just don't ask me who the two losses are going to be to because I don't know. <laughs> right. All right. The next question is their conference record. And like I said, I haven't exactly picked who the two losses are going to be to, but I'm kind of nervous about the Alabama game. I'm not going to lie. I do think Texas probably has more talent on paper going into that game but of course that's like 40 percent of it you know so uh we'll see what happens on september 9th and then i think you know maybe at some point one big 12 team is going to beat them right i don't know who it's going to be i know it's not going to be texas tech after what brett yormark said but somebody in the conference will get them but i think they'll still be good enough to get to arlington for the big 12 championship game and hopefully win it so i think they go eight and one in conference i think one big 12 team gets them outside of that they go on a pretty good run in their last year in the conference The next question they asked and answered was, who do you see the Longhorns losing to this year? Now, I picked their record to be 10 and two, but I think there are four teams that could beat Texas this year. And I would not be shocked. That doesn't mean I wouldn't be disappointed. That doesn't mean I think Texas is going to lose these games. 
I would just see these games as, oh, okay, those are teams that could beat Texas. The first one is Alabama, right? Even if you think Texas is going to go into Tuscaloosa in week two and win that game, you're certainly not crazy for thinking that. But you are crazy if you think that Alabama has no chance <laughs> against Texas. Alabama certainly could win that game. You know, it's going to be a very exciting matchup on September 9th. So I could see the Longhorns losing to the Crimson Tide. The second one is TCU. Now, I know TCU uh, lost a ton of talent. They lost a ton of experience, but I think they still have a really good unit on the defensive side of the ball with a really good defensive coordinator. And I think they're going to be, you know, pretty explosive on offense as well under Sonny Dyke. So I don't think that they'll be the same TCU team. And I don't think that TCU will beat Texas. But if I looked up at the end of the game and TCU had won, I would not be completely shocked. I would not think it was the end of the world if Texas lost to a TCU team that I think will still be really good in 2023 the next one is kansas state right just the way that they can run the ball you bring back uh one of the best quarterbacks in the country especially in the conference and will howard uh one of the best offensive lines and that's a defensive unit just a, a team period that's really well coached and really well disciplined you know i know we haven't lost to them since 2017 and i don't expect us to lose to them this year especially at home but i think kansas state is a team you know, that could beat almost anybody on their schedule. And I would not be completely shocked if Kansas State beat Texas. The next one, I know some people are going to, you know, moan and groan when they hear this about Oklahoma. And this is strictly about it being one of the biggest rivalries in college football. There being a lot of hatred there, you know, year two under Brent Venables. You expect that program to be better. You expect that team to be better. Hopefully they have a quarterback this time. You know, if Dylan Gabriel is healthy. Uh, but I don't think Oklahoma is going to beat Texas, but we know in that game, anything can happen, right? We've seen Texas teams that had no business being on the field with Oklahoma win that game in the Red River shootout. It's just one of those rivalry games where you throw everything out the window, talent on paper, current records, current rankings, all of that, and you just go play football, hard those football for 60 minutes. And even though we won last year 49-0, to that does not carry over to this season. So I think Texas will beat Oklahoma by 10-plus points, but – if Oklahoma was to win that game, I would not be completely shocked because that's the nature of the Red River rivalry. The next question is, does Texas win the Big 12? Duh. You know, I think it's kind of hard to say if they will win the actual Big 12 championship game because anything could happen in a one game scenario. We saw that last year where TCU beat everybody in the conference and then lost to Kansas State when they played them for a second time. I have no doubt in my mind that Texas will be in the Big 12 championship game in December in Arlington. And I'm going to go ahead and take it a step further and say no matter who they match up against, they will win that game and win the conference on the way out. The offensive player of the year for the Texas football team this season, I think it has to be Quinn Ewers. I, when you look at it, you're going to have some running backs that are going to put up some really good numbers. You're going to have Xavier Worthy or you know, A.D. Mitchell, who might put up Belitnikov type numbers and really compete for that award. You know, J.T. Sanders is going to be one of the best uh tight ends in the country maybe behind brock bowers but when i look at it i just think there's too many weapons on this offense to feed that they're all going to kind of take away from each other i don't think anybody can just have a dominant uh Devontae smith type performance from 2020 because there's so many weapons on this team so many mouths to feed and i think because of that they're all going to cut into each other's numbers even though they'll all be some of the best at their individual positions i don't think any of them will be able to rise above and be an offensive player of the year type candidate so quinn ewers who gets the benefit from distributing the ball to all of these talented playmakers he will be the offensive player of the year and i think for Texas to have the type of season that we all think they will, he's the most important piece, right? Because I think we kind of know how the wide receiver room is coming this year, right? We know how the tight end room is coming this year. We know how the running back room is coming this year. The biggest question mark just happens to be the biggest factor on this offense, and that's Quinn Ewers. If they can put it all together, it's going to be because Quinn Ewers developed and stepped into that quarterback that we saw at South Lake Carroll, and if he does that, he will be the offensive player of the year for the Texas football team, the defensive player of the year for the Texas football team. And hopefully the big 12, as it should have been last year is Jalen Ford. You know, I heard some people say Jalen Catalan, but I just think the health is too big of a concern. You know, I'm not sure um, if he's going to step in and, and be able to have that big of a role, but we saw Jalen Ford last year as a third team, all American. And like I said, he should have won big 12 defensive player of the year. I just think he's the clear leader of this team. He's playing at such a high level, right. in all phases of the game. And I think this year you're going to see, it, you know, with his experience, his knowledge, his instincts, his playmaking ability is just going to make everybody on this defense better. I think this defense, I've said it a million times, if Jalen Catalan can be on the field for 10 plus games, it can borderline elite. And I think Jalen Ford will be the biggest 
factor in reason why, right? He'll be the leader in the middle of it. He'll have everybody where they're supposed to be. And I think this will be a really good defensive unit. Jalen Ford will be the best player on this defense this year. All right. So two more questions. The offensive freshman of the year. I think it has to be Cedric Baxter. No brainer, right? I think Jonte Cook could have an argument if we didn't have four you know, really talented receivers in front of him. And I just don't think there's any other, you know, freshman on the offense that would have a bigger role than Cedric Baxter. He's going to be, you know, running back two, possibly even running back one. If you saw that report uh, from inside Texas, he's going to get a ton of touches this year. Uh, there's just nobody else on the offense that has an argument that they could be offensive freshmen over Cedric Baxter, number one running back in the country. He gets to showcase it starting on September 2nd against Rice. And then the defensive freshman, we heard that Leonga LaFowle had a really good offseason. We heard that Malik Muhammad really turned it up in fall camp and threatened uh, for a starting corner spot, but it has to be Anthony here. You know, number one linebacker in the country coming out of high school. Uh, they had a plan for him from day one. Even if David Bender started, you're talking about somebody in Anthony Hill who's in your obvious rotation of linebackers, but somebody who is going to be a hell of a threat rushing the passer. And he has a defined role on this football team already, even as a linebacker off the bench, right? That tells you how talented he is, and that tells you that you can't keep that talent off the field. So Leon LaFowle and Malik Muhammad can make plays for this Texas football team this year, but none of them have defined roles in the way that Anthony Hill has right out of the gate. So he is my defensive freshman of the year. So those are the questions that I answered from inside Texas. And those are my answers. Let me know in the comments. Did you disagree with me? Did you agree with me? Am I right or wrong? Am I crazy? Not crazy. <laughs> Let me know a quick word from our sponsors. And then we're talking about the Achilles heel of the Steve Sarkeesian era thus far at Texas. Can he get over losing halftime leads and not being able to finish games at the University of Texas in 2023? This episode of Locked on Longhorns is brought to you by BetterHelp. Sometimes in life, we're faced with tough choices, and the path forward isn't always clear. Whether you're dealing with decisions around careers, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life. So you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more that you practice it, the easier it gets. If you're thinking of starting therapy, please Give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnCollege today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOnCollege. I was reading an article the other day and it was titled the major question mark for each college football playoff team, right? Or college football playoff contender in 2023. And so I read the article not thinking that Texas would be on it. Right. And it's kind of crazy to see after all of, you know, the transformation we've done and everything over the last three years, we haven't necessarily put the product on the field that everybody expects to see. Right. And of course in 2021, we were five and seven and underachieved, even though that wasn't a great team to begin with. 2022, we came back last year and we're eight and five, but I thought we could have been better. But, you know, you did see some improvement. And now we're being talked about as a college football playoff contender. There's a bunch of national media saying, oh, yeah, they're going to go into Alabama and win by double digits. Right. People have us, uh, you know, in the college football playoff. There's a few people that have picked us to win the national championship. Right. So I think it's just crazy you know that texas is getting all of this hype right now but when you look at you know the development and the talent on the roster you would expect a team like this you know to succeed and like i said a lot of people think that this team could make it to the college football playoff and this article was no different right because it listed us as a contender and you know i've said on the podcast i do think that we have a path now the argument or you know the question of is texas a college football playoff contender i think starts and ends on september 10th you know based on what happens in that Alabama game? If you lose that game, I don't think there's enough juice on the rest of your schedule to get into the college football playoff, even if you were to run the table. But of course, that would depend on, you know, what the other teams ahead of you do, you know, and if you beat Alabama, then I think that's the juice you need to control your own destiny to get to the college football playoff as long as you don't, you know, kind of fumble throughout the Big 12 regular season. So 
you know, Texas definitely is a college football playoff contender, even if it's crazy to hear out loud this season in 2023, if they go out there and take care of business. So I was reading the article and the articles mentioned that I can't remember who wrote it, but the article mentioned that Texas biggest question mark in terms of being a contender is finishing games and not blowing halftime leads. And I was reminded of how big of an issue that has been throughout the Steve Sarkeesian era. And if Texas were to hold on to the majority of these games or even half of these games, how we would look at the last two years differently and how we would look at Steve Sarkeesian differently already. So since 2021, since Steve Sarkeesian took over, Texas has lost seven games that they had a halftime lead in. Steve Sarkeesian is 13 and 12 at the University of Texas. And in seven of his 12 losses, it's over 50%, right? For my math people at home, they had a halftime lead in those games. In seven of Sark's 12 losses, they had a halftime lead in those games. That includes the Alabama game. Now, you had lost Quinn Ewers, so maybe you were just holding on for dear life. That includes Oklahoma State and Texas Tech last year were both losses. That includes, of course, the Red River shootout where you blew a 21-point lead, you know, multiple games that year as well, right? Seven of the 12 losses, you had a halftime lead in. If you're able to finish those games, what Sark would be, what, 20 and 5 instead of 13 and 12? That's crazy, right? Completely different perception of our head coach. Since 2021, Texas is 4 in 10 in one possession games. And Steve Sarkeesian, period has lost 11 out of his last 15 one possession games, right? If you're able to have a better record and finish games that come down to the wire that are one possession, and if you're able to play for four quarters and win these games that you have a halftime lead in, maybe not all of them, but the majority of them, this Texas football team is a completely different unit. We're looking at Steve Sarkeesian as a completely different coach, and that's what's going to have to happen in 2023 for Texas to win 10 games, for Texas to be in the Big 12 championship game and win it, for Texas to be a college football playoff contender. We have to look at a football team that can play for four quarters, and if they have a halftime lead, they can come out of halftime and play with the same intensity in the third and fourth quarter and finish the deal. Because for the last two years, that is the opposite of what we have seen at the 40 acres. And I think four things that have to take place and really take form this year to make sure that this is not an issue in year three under Steve Sarkeesian is strength and conditioning. And I think they've done such a good job under that uh, of that under Coach Beck. We've seen a lot of transformation physically the last two years from players on this roster. And I think last year they did do a better job of finishing games. But like I said, you did have, you know, the Oklahoma State game and the Texas Tech game where you kind of flamed out. I won't blame the Alabama game on strength and conditioning because you lose your starting quarterback it just kind of felt like you were holding on until Bryce Young made a play. And that's exactly what happened with some ref support, right, in that game. But I think this year is the year we'll really see the strength and conditioning take form. And Steve Sarkeesian talked about it in his media availability, being able to have, uh, you know, the physical strength and the physical fortitude to last for four quarters and play the brand of football that we want to play for four quarters. This Texas football team has enough talent and offensive firepower with Steve Sarkeesian calling it to come out and really step on teams and take a huge lead. But can they come out of halftime with that same intensity in the third and fourth quarter and continue to blitz teams on the offensive side like that and then hold them down defensively for four quarters to win games this year? I think they're more than capable. But like I said, it starts with the strength and conditioning aspect under Coach Beck. The second is mental toughness, right? Do you have the mental toughness to go out there and assert your will for 60 minutes? And it's the same thing, right? We've seen them do it for 30 minutes. And then the other team comes out and continues to punch us in the mouth and we don't know how to respond. Right. Do you have the mental toughness to beat a team for 60 minutes? Do you have the mental toughness to play the brand of football that we want to play for 60 minutes? If you do so, then we should see a different Texas football team because we've been able to go out and assert our will throughout the entire Steve Sarkeesian era. But the last 30 minutes is where we falter, whether it's physically or mentally, we cannot hold up our end of the bargain. And that's why Steve Sarkeesian is sitting at 13 and 12 after 25 games at the University of Texas. If we can keep that mental fortitude for 60 minutes, we can be a championship level team in 2023. The next thing I wrote down is playing for four quarters. That's pretty much what I've just said, right? And the last thing is better talent, right? Of course, 
it takes a lot of mental fortitude and, and physical strength and toughness to be able to play for, you know, 60 minutes, assert your will on opponents and, and be able to beat them week in and week out. But also just having better talent will help, for, you know, help with that. Right. You have better talent, play in and play out to be able to uh, assert your will, put up points, hopefully stop them on the defensive end and continue that throughout, you know, four quarters. And I think you have enough talent on this football team and enough depth on this football team to keep, you know, your main people fresh and, you know, keep the best players in the game. And every time that Texas steps on the field, they'll pretty much have the best player on the field at every position. And that should be enough to carry them through, you know, four quarters, through 60 minutes, week in and week out, hopefully to Arlington for the Big 12 championship game and possibly, you know, for a college football playoff appearance at the end of the season. So, you know, really when you look at it with all of the blown halftime leads and all of the one score losses we've had, this could have been a completely different Texas team the last two years, but it takes time to rebuild a program and it takes time to learn how to win. And I think Texas is in that phase right now. And that's going to have to be the biggest thing. You know, we've talked about Quinn Ewer's development. That's huge this year. We talked about Steve Sarkeesian being able to manage games better and call plays better. That's huge. The interior offensive line that has to be a lot better this year. The pass rush has to be a lot better this year. There are a lot of things that have happened the last two years that Texas has to clean up. But the biggest thing is if you have a halftime lead, you have to finish that game. And if this Texas team is learning how to win and they're learning how to be a top program again, then you have to learn how to win those games that come down to the clutch, that come down to the wire, those one possession games. You have to be better than your opponent in those crucial moments. And if they can do that, like I said, we're looking at a team that certainly should be in the Big 12 championship game and could be on the outside looking in or right on the inside looking out <laughs> in the college football playoff at the end of the season. A quick word from our sponsors. And then we're talking about 12 Texas Longhorn players on the senior bowl watch list. That's a huge accomplishment for this Texas football team. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, the official partner of the National Football League. So I put on the graphic, if you're watching on YouTube, it says Senior Bowl Invites. I should have not said that. It's the Senior Bowl Watch List. So these are the 12 players that the Senior Bowl will be watching out for this season um, and could get invites throughout the season. Um, and, of course, it's up to the players whether they accept them or deny them. And, of course, this means that these 12 players uh, are going to be on NFL draft boards, right, and are going to be on, you know, NFL teams' radars this season. And this doesn't even include – you know, players like JT Sanders, Xavier Worthy, Jonathan Brooks, uh, A.D. Mitchell, Quinn Ewers that are juniors. Right. So that's just a crazy amount of talent on this football team when there are 12 players on the senior bowl watch list and players like Quinn Ewers, Xavier Worthy and JT Sanders don't even contribute to that. Right. Because they're not seniors. So let's talk about um, the development of these players that we've seen since Steve Sarkeesian and his staff have taken over um, just the growth for a lot of these players, the ability to recruit and bring in players from the transfer portal and um, just the amount of talent and attention that's around this Texas football team right now for 12 players to be on the senior bowl watch list. We are two years removed from Texas, not having a single draft pick and only putting two players from that team period in the NFL via undrafted free agency. And now you have 12 that are just on the senior bowl watch list and maybe 15 plus players on this team that'll be eventually draft, you know, po possibly even 20 plus, right? When I look at it from the 2023 and 20, uh, 2020, 2022 and 2023 classes, gosh, that's a long Tuesday morning already, right? 20 plus players on this football team could be drafted. It's crazy. So when we look at the 12 players that have been invited or on the senior bowl watch list, let me stop saying invited, but the way they're going to play this year, they all will be invited, right? I'm speaking it to it. I'm speaking it into existence. Jade Barron, Jalen Catalan, Alfred Collins, Keaton Crawford, Jalen Ford, Kristen Jones, Isaiah Nayor, Keelan Robinson, Tavondre Sweat, Jaron Thompson, Ryan Watts, and Jordan Whittington, all on the senior bowl watch list, all on NFL teams' radars. And if they have a good season, that's only going to solidify that. 
and push them closer to their dreams of playing on Sunday. So, like I said, this team has a crazy amount of talent. And then, of course, we know the big awards. You know, Quinn Ewers is, you know, uh, on the Heisman watch list, the, the Davey O'Brien. Uh, you got JT Sanders up for, I think, the Mackey Award for the tight ends. Uh, you got Xavier Worthy and A.D. Mitchell on the Blitnikoff watch list. So just a crazy amount of talent on this football team, a crazy amount of experience. And it's no secret why the majority of the people in the nation think that Texas could be back, whatever that means. They think that this Texas football team will be really good. And hopefully under year three, uh, Steve Sarkeesian, this is the year that Texas finally starts to live up to expectations again. You know, those lofty offseason expectations and all of that offseason Kool-Aid, hopefully it pays off on the field in 2023. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Locked On Longhorns, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hook them. And peace. So close to Saturday, man. I could feel it. I could smell the grass. I could taste the barbecue. And I could taste the beer or whatever you drink on Saturday. <laughs> peace. You are a lot.